Business Bites. Go further and grow stronger with Invest in I. Join local businesses generating billions exporting to Europe. Check your export readiness with Invest in I's free online export health check. Business Bites with Invest in I. Hi, welcome to another edition of Business Bites from Bauer Media here in Northern Ireland. My name is David Tai, the Managing Director of Bauer Media, and each week we delve into the world of business and we tell some of the positive stories from our part of the world. Well, this week's guest is a first for Business Bites. It's Aidan Fisher. He's the General Manager of Trow Nutrition. Uh, Aidan, welcome to Business Bites. Good morning, David. Thank you. It's great to have you along. Um, a couple of very obvious questions. First of all, uh, Trow, uh, that's not an acronym, is it? What, what, where does that come from? What, what's the story behind Trow Nutrition? Indeed, Trow, Trow Nutrition, David, is a, is a global business. Um, it's a Dutch-owned business, and the business in Ireland is a, an operating company of our, of our Dutch parent company. Trow, as a Dutch word, actually, is the Dutch word for trust, or indeed loyalty, um, and while we have about uh, 10,000 employees globally, um, in our European business, we have about 1,500 colleagues. And in Ireland, we have about 65 colleagues um, servicing the local Irish market. Great, great. And uh, well, I've learned a new word. That's, that's fantastic. So thank you for that. Um, so nutrition, not necessarily in the sense that most people might think. So when we talk, when, when, when I think of nutrition, I think of going to the supermarket, picking up some healthy food and uh, trying to do my best to uh, you know, maintain the planet. But we're taking a few steps back from that with, with your organization. So just tell us, what, how does Trown Nutrition work? What's it involved with and, and, and how's, how long has it been going and what does it do? Indeed, um, almost for 100 years, the Trow business um, across Europe and across the world has been providing um, nutritional solutions uh, for customers who, who are feeding animals. So we are part of the food industry, David. We are part of the food chain, ultimately. But we're right back at the very start, um, where you imagine if you're driving across the countryside and you see a dairy cow in a grass field or you think of a chicken in a barn, um, we we are we are helping to feed those animals to make them as healthy and as sustainable as they can be, as as our part in the food chain. Right. So when uh, when we see adverts of a cow in the field with the sun shining, eating the green grass, um, that's not the limit. Uh, that there, there's more to be done. There is that right? No, that indeed, right? and and that's a well proven and and a very uh, in some ways sustainable um, operating uh, system for that animal. However, to get the absolute best out of that animal in terms of performance and indeed the animal's health, um, we as a business uh, would support our customers to find nutritional solutions in the diet for that animal, in addition to the grass that that, that animal may be eating in the dairy world, for example, um, and more and more in recent years. It's not just about performance and health. It's, it's incredibly, um, increasingly important on the area of sustainability, how that animal can be more sustainable, given all the debates going on around us at the moment around the future of the world and, and climate change. So what has happened then in this sector over the last few years? Because it seems certainly in the last four or five years that, that the sustainability debate has just completely transformed yeah, the 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 bit the role that a, a business like Troy Nutrition plays is that we we've a key role in the food chain. It it's not just about uh, feeding animals and putting food onto our shelves. I think if you look at the war in Ukraine or if you look at the global pandemic, for the first time in my lifetime and maybe others, we we were almost at a situation where we wondered would we have enough food on our shelves. Um, if you think forward to twenty fifty when there could be ten billion people living on the planet we live on today. How can we continue to make sure that we can feed all of those people on the planet? And how can we do it in a more sustainable sense? So the debate on climate could be quite straightforward in some people's eyes. Something is either good or bad, and, and you take one direction or the other, but it's actually a much more holistic approach that, that we feel needs to be taken. And, and we can, and we have proven that with the right nutritional solutions, whether it's a cow, whether it's a pig, whether it's a chicken, there are much more sustainable ways to farm. And there are lots of great examples across the island of Ireland and further afield where there are very sustainable farming practices being applied every day. And people are seeing the benefit of that as to the animals, because they're much they're much healthier, they're much more resilient and they're much more sustainable in the process. So there's a lot of talk about technology, data. How do we measure this? So how, how do you how do you how, how can you, I suppose, 
how do you prove that you are making that difference to, to the to the farmers and also to the end users and to the people that um, you know this really matters to? Yeah, ultimately, David, there's there's those two key people in, in in that equation, in my opinion. There's the consumer. It's you or I. It's our families who, who go to the shelf in a retail outlet or who sit in a restaurant and want to make a an informed choice and a responsible choice in, in what we eat or drink. And at the same time, there's the farmer at the very start of that chain who themselves are trying to run a sustainable business, both in the financial sustainability sense, but also the environmental sustainability sense. They care for their animals. They care for the future of, of their business. And in getting that approach right from the farm to the plate it is absolutely critical. I think as a food industry, we've we've come a long way in how we communicate that and, and indeed the steps that we're taking to do that. We've come a long way right across that food chain and how we're becoming more sustainable. The missing link at the minute with the food chain and ultimately the retailer or the restaurant is how we communicate that to the consumer because there are lots of mixed messages out there and there are there are lots of stories, maybe myths, but actually the best way to do it is to stick to facts and therefore at the farm level, one of the roles that our business plays, not only do we sell products, but we also sell solutions that the farmer can track performance data they can track environmental data and they know at the end of a week or at the end of a month that not only have they run a sustainable business, but they've done it in a more responsible way. Right. And we always like to uh, blow our own trumpet here about our part of the world. So how how are we doing here in, in Northern Ireland? How, how are... How are our farming community getting on, and and how you know are, are we are we top of any league table? We always like to be kind of you know trying to tell the good story. If if I give you the perception of of one of the leaders at the very senior level in, in the Troy nutrition business, he he came to Belfast last year, and he made the statement that Ireland as an island had an opportunity to be the global leader in sustainable food production. That was somebody who'd been in the industry for over thirty years. Yes, he was speaking to an audience in Belfast. Yes, he knew the audience he was speaking to, but he said it genuinely and he backed it up with a number of facts. I think the fact that we as an island export um, over 75% of the food we produce, we cannot just look at the sustainability equation of the island of Ireland based on the food consumed on the island of Ireland. We're also feeding consumers right across Europe and right across the world. We've got some of the best and most passionate farmers. Yes, that may be a biased opinion, maybe less so fact-based, but we know as we travel across the countryside the care that our farmers take for the food that they produce. And it's no surprise that when a, a leading global retailer like Marks & Spencer profiles their sustainability credentials to their consumers, that it's farmers in green fields in Northern Ireland who are part of their um, advertising and communication with consumers. So I do think as a food industry in Northern Ireland, we absolutely uh, punch above our weight and, and we should be proud of what we do. We shouldn't rest on our laurels. Others are watching, others are trying to imitate, but I think that's a compliment in itself. Uh, well, that's high praise. And uh, I, I always, I've always thought it's a good career choice never to upset farmers. So um, I just think uh, congratulations uh, to all of our farming community for being so brilliant and we do rely on we do rely on them and it's not an easy job we know that um so final question looking to the future future for trial nutrition here future developments but also i suppose the future for sustainable um farming in in our part of the world Does, is it looking positive what are the challenges yeah it, it, in our opinion as a business it's looking very positive um uh, we recently had a, a visit from our, our chief executive of the global trial business he spent a few days meeting customers, meeting colleagues within the team and reviewing options with myself and our senior team as to how we would invest future on the island of Ireland and not just confirm, but reinforce those partnerships we've built over the past uh, 50, 60, 70 years. The future of, of sustainable agricultural production on the island of Ireland should be viewed as a positive one. And there are many opportunities um, right across that food chain for for farmers, for our customers, and ultimately for consumers to be proud of the sustainable food that we produce on the island of Ireland. Well, we always like to finish on a high, and uh, I don't think we're going to get any better than that. It sounds like a very positive future. Thank you for telling us the story of, of Trow Nutrition and uh, maybe some of that unsung um, work that goes on in the background that we as consumers spend very little time thinking about. I think it's been a really interesting conversation. Indeed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you.
Business Bites. Go further and grow stronger with Invest NI. Join local businesses generating billions exporting to Europe. Check your export readiness with Invest NI's free online export health check. Business Bites with Invest NI.